Hello and welcome to my channel. I am Zodiac Bandit and normally when I talk about Critical Role moments, I talk about the best moments. I have a bunch of videos about the best Critical Role moments for campaigns one, two, three so far. And then I have some of the, you know, best character moments for a handful of the Bell's Hells. I do believe I've dabbled into Vox Machina a little bit. So I've been talking about moments a lot, but none of them are ever truly negative. So today I kind of wanted to look at the saddest moments in Critical Role and that means there's going to be a bunch of spoilers going forward. So if you aren't caught up with all three campaigns, there are going to be some spoilers ahead for each of them. And I'm only talking about campaigns one, two, and three, no EXU, because I feel like there's a bunch of stuff that happens in EXU that could make its own video. So I might make I know, my own EXU status moments video down the line. But for now, we're just doing the regular Critical Role campaigns one, two, and three. So spoilers ahead. Like I said, last warning, get caught up. Also, for those of you who don't want to hear me talk after every single video or clip that pops up in this video, there will be timestamps in the description for you to skip ahead so you don't have to hear me talk. So, there you go. For those who don't want to listen to my voice. I'm um, forward. Forward. Appreciate your help. You want to get up out of this thing? Yeah. <laughs> Where's Molly? Welcome. Who? Molly. Uh, oh, your friend. Uh, just right. Is he waiting upstairs? He didn't make it. To this dungeon? Because he's waiting upstairs? He didn't survive the trip. I'm really sorry. Was that when we heard you guys? What, what the caravan. Mean? We were in the caravan, we heard you, you guys in fighting. There? Fuck. We heard people shouting, I heard you call for Molly. Yeah. We couldn't see you. We could barely Try. see anything. We were stuck. They had us gagged and bound. And I, I swore I heard a few voices, but we were moving before we knew it. We tried shouting. There's just no way you could hear us. No, we are sorry. We tried our best, but it wasn't good enough. He tried his best. He he got right up in Lorenzo's face, and it just wasn't strong enough. We uh, we got cocky and underestimated our enemies. That's not your fault. Where did you leave him? He's buried in the wood, in the Bramblewood. Right? No, mm -hmm. that's not right. That's old campaign. Yeah, no, you, you buried him. On, you buried him along the Glory Run Road. It's a fitting name. We can. Um, we can take you there. Okay. Yeah. It's on the way back to Sadash. We got to talk to the gentleman anyway. Did. Did you. Did you kill everyone here? I think so. Lorenzo? Yep. What about that short guy that was really mean? Pro Prado? Yeah, fuck him. Pro Prado. Prado? Prado? Yeah. You know, we, we should be sure. And the nasty bunch, Lorenzo, was not what he seemed. No. We, uh, we need to give the house the once over. Make sure there is nobody left when we agree to clear this house of everything. Fuck! Sorry. We should have seen them coming, heard them. No, we just weren't expecting it. It's no one's fault. It doesn't feel that way. No, it doesn't. I was lying. So the clip you just saw was Ford and Jester learning of Molly Mock's death, and I am a person who doesn't feel like the emotional sting for when a character dies. That part is more shocking and jarring and surprising. The part where the emotions come from is from the reactions of those who come afterwards, who have to now move forward. They now see that the character is gone and they have to live the rest of their lives without that person in it. They have to move forward without them. That is where the sadness comes from because the person who's gone is gone. They have no more emotions. The people who are still standing they're the ones who feel the pain of losing the other person. And that's why I like this moment. Because 
Ford begins to blame himself because Ford kind of is the leader here and he believes that he got caught off guard and he shouldn't have been caught off guard. He shouldn't have been captured by Lorenzo. Jester makes a great reveal that they heard the fighting going on and had they been able to get out and join the fight, Molly Mock might not be dead. And it's at this moment where the rest of the party start taking in the fact that yes, Molly Mock is gone. And Bo sort of backs it up with Ford and says, yeah, they kind of do blame themselves because it is their fault. They got cocky. And I love this moment for that reason. This is the moment where they all start to truly realize that this is where they have to go now. They have to move forward without Molly Mock. And I very, very much like this moment. Also, I like Caduceus' standpoint, who's also just like, I don't know who that is, but I feel all of your pain. And I very much like Caduceus in these moments because of that. Caduceus is a character who came in because of the death of Molly Mock. And now they get to meet Caduceus. And it's technically the first time Ford and Jester get to meet Caduceus as well, which is really cool. It isn't technically, it is the first time they get to meet him. So there's just a lot of good happening in this moment. It's very sad watching Jester and Ford sort of fold and realizing that, oh shit, this is technically our fault because we got captured and they came after us. Unfortunately, Ashley Johnson's not there, so we don't really get Yasha's reaction. Matt does give Yasha a good reaction later on down the road when they get to Molly Mock's grave. But that's not this moment. I just felt like mentioning it because it is still a good moment. But overall, I think this is a very sad moment because you feel the pain and you can identify with Ford saying, it's my fault. You can always blame yourself when something like this happens. And I truly identify with that of it's my responsibility to make sure that this group sticks together. And I failed that. And I think that is very powerful. Let's pass up. Are we all here then? Grog! Scanlan was down. Scanlan's down. <laughs> I'll take off running for Vex. Okay, as you turn around the corner, oh God, um, uh, Keeman and Allura are rushing up to you now as well. Uh, is he? And you turn the corner, Grog, and you see uh, Vax holding the still body of Scanlan just dangling out of his arms. No. No. No! Fix him! It's not a rocket. Leave a child. Will somebody do something? We have to take him home. We have to get him out of here. <laughs> well, we got all these people with magic. You've all got magic spells. You just brought him back. Fix him. Mike looks at Kima. Can you do anything? Uh, th this is this is beyond any of my capabilities. I look. I I have a certain skill set, and it's not. This kind of skill set. I'm Bax. sorry. Back to the Raven Queen. You can you can talk to her, right? Vax? The clip you just saw is always one of the most powerful clips to me in Campaign One. It is the realization of a simple-minded man that his friend is gone, and at the very moment they can't bring him back. The words fix him in Grog's very powerful, booming voice, yelling at the people who should normally be the ones bringing other people back to life, not doing it to bring him back is powerful. And it honestly like makes me personally feel weak whenever I hear fix him because his simple mind only knows that these people who are with him, his friends, his allies, they normally fix the issue. They normally are the ones to stand up and be like, okay, time to heal. And I think the part that comes with like the, the, the biggest emotion for me is he points at Percy and says, you just fixed him. So now it's time to fix Scanlan. That's what you guys are supposed to do. You're supposed to fix all of us. And now that Scanlan is still not moving, not being fixed, this moment carries so much weight, especially with what it leads to later on down the line. But Travis, being an amazing voice actor like he is, an amazing actor in this moment, really brings out the emotion in me personally, and I'm sure many of you as well, when he yells, fix him. What do we need to do to fix him? What do we need to get? And what do we, you know, pick him up, let's go. We need to fix him. I very much love this moment because it's so simple and it's so raw of emotion. It is one of the most legit reactions, in my opinion, to someone being gone and having all of this ability around them to be able to bring them back and it's not happening. I love this moment for so many reasons. It brings out a ton of visceral emotion from everyone in the room. As the sun now hangs high in the sky, a cold sensation takes you in the chest, Vax. Just a small pain. The second one, 
and your eyes shoot over across to the Raven's Crest. Damaged, but still standing. You turn around to look at the rest of your family, and as you guys look at his face, in but a flash, you can see this dark shape behind him. This looming black cloak, this lithe dress that cascades down into a bell and drags across the ground. And there you see the form of the Raven Queen, porcelain mask, long dark hair behind as her hands slowly creep over the shoulders of Axelon. I walk to step in between. In between the two of them? Yes. The, while the lips do not move on this mask, the voice in your head says, you've done well, but do not approach. This is not for you. No. Do you recall what you told me once? No response. Do you continue to walk? I do. Make a wisdom saving throw. Percy. I knew. Uh, no, that's a, actually, you know what, hey, that's right. I took a, I'm gonna Freddy. resolve that. Freddy. This is not about you. Uh, that's a 19, 20, 20, 22. That does not do it. Damn it, that was a 19. You're my own. The muscles lock into place and you find yourself <laughs> held there on your third step. The voice, which is omnipresent, in your mind, all about, continues. Soothing, cold, distant, but still soothing. The mask slowly looks down towards him. You have done well, my champion. The skein of destiny has tugged in your wake. And even this victory culminates with the crossing of a few fate-touched souls. By your hand, your bravery, your sacrifice, you ensure a future for all you love, and all who will come to love you and what you've done. You may never know the import of your time here, but take solace in the knowledge that you will see the ripples of your actions carry hope for generations to come. My Vaxeldon, it is time. No. Say your goodbyes, then come join my side. And the hands pull away, and she stands there. Now, we don't even get a, just a night together or anything? not fair. You've got like a really long time to be alive. You've got an infinite time. He's What's a few more years? He sacrificed himself in your name. You remain the only ascended. And yet he still loses. He does not lose. The gifts I gave, indeed all of your patrons gave, were so that you, and you watch as her hands extend almost impossibly long around her, and everyone here still stands. I understand selfishness. I understand the impulse of mortality. But I would hope that you understand that the actions that you've allowed Vaxel done in this sacrifice are far larger. But we need a deal. With power comes a price. Vax's time running out on Alexandria is incredibly painful to watch to this day. I, of course, didn't watch it live. I can only imagine what people felt watching it live I watched it on the, you know, when I went back to watch Campaign 1 after I finished Campaign 2. So when this moment did finally come, I knew of it, but it was still painful to watch. 
seeing the reactions of everyone else, much like I said earlier, the reactions of everyone else who have to remain to me are much more impactful. And Vax accepted this. He accepted that this was going to be the outcome. But I love watching everyone try to bargain. You know, she says, or Vex says that he's got, you know, she the Raven Queen's got infinite time. Give him a couple more years. And then uh, Keyleth saying, like, this is his reward for making sure you're the only ascended god still standing. And, you know, the Raven Queen sort of snapping back saying, like, everyone's still alive. Everyone who's still alive here, you all included, is because of his sacrifice. And that's my, you know, that's the boon I gave you. I gave you Vax back for this time period. And it's incredibly painful to watch all these characters try to bargain and when when Percy's tries to step forward and you know when Vax tells him hey you don't have to do that I can accept this Percy says it's not about you which I think is the best sort of verbiage to explain why all these moments are on this list it's not about the person who's dying it's about everyone else which I think is very powerful and I think his words there truly emphasize what this list is about about the sadness that everyone else has to feel after that person's gone. And this moment is like the the final step of fighting it before it happens, which I think is incredibly p powerful. She's too fucking weak. That fucking bitch. Oh, oh God. She stole my coin, didn't she? Okay, I'm gonna kneel down. Mm. I'm gonna go to Laudna and sort of push her hair to the side. We'll find a way back for you, I promise. Sorry, I, this is, I don't know what to do. It, it's the coin's fault. You can, we can be met at the change bringer later. Oh, I don't like how this is making me feel. Okay. I'll go to Orem. Just go gather him up. My friend, um, can you please come back because I'm getting a little scared and we need, we need your help because we can't do this just by ourselves, okay? Fern having to pick between Orem and Ladna is, to me, what would probably be one of the hardest decisions in any campaign that's come up thus far to have to pick between your comfort person and someone who is becoming part of your family, who is becoming one of your closest friends or is part of your family and is one of your closest friends to have to pick between them and to look at the other people's eyes and be like, I have to pick one to come down to a coin toss, which to this day, we still don't know if that actually affected the outcome or if that just gave comfort of mind to everyone around and gave Fern an excuse. This moment is so, so good. This moment of leaning over to Laden and saying, I promise we'll get you back somehow. And then reviving Orem to me is still one of the most emotional moments of the campaign. It had me on the edge of my seat. Who was she going to pick? Did the coin toss matter? Did any of it matter? Was she always just going to revive Orem? And was she just trying to give Imogen comfort? And then you have to think of it from Imogen's perspective. This person who you love is lying there dead. And yes, you love Orem too, but you would rather have Laudna back. Laudna is Imogen's comfort character, like how Orem is Fern's comfort character. So for her, having to watch in the silence as someone else makes a decision about if your loved one is coming back or if one of your f friends and family members is coming back is a very hard moment to be in. It's a very hard situation to stand in and be like, I can't say anything because then my bias comes out. And then 
it's just a hard moment. The moment is so powerful to try to pick between two people. Do I save my son from falling off the cliff? Do I save my daughter from falling off the cliff? That is effectively this example here. Do I have to, who do I save? My sibling, my, my brother or my sister, my mom or my dad. You know, these are the moments that like you come down to and you just would rather jump off the cliff yourself and not have to make the choice. But a choice had to be made. Otherwise, neither of them would be coming back and you would still be left standing here and both of your friends are dead. And I very much think that this moment is super powerful and impactful and led to a great little mini arc where we got to learn a lot more about Laudna. So in the end, with this moment being the way it is, it led to something great, which is what I think all great moments like this should do. Go ahead and make a medicine check. <clears throat> Sixteen. Sixteen. Okay. As the light gathers around the body, the magic attempting to reach out into whatever space holds the souls here in the Astral Sea, as so many go scattering outward now to search for one, a fragment of one, or is it a whole one? If souls can grow from out of peace, to try and reverse the trajectory of that one, if it is indeed available. Oh, oh no! I can't believe that just happened. <gasps> I get to re-roll ones. <laughs> Unfortunately, it doesn't work that way. The magic feels like it finds something. But maybe it's because it's just a fragment of the spirit, it's not strong enough to bring it back. It's not strong enough magic. And as the light fades, the body is restored, the wounds are cleaned, and there before you is the body you remember, as Malimok Tea Leaf sands the red eyes, of course. But the spear did not return. He's lifeless. He is. But we know it's him. At least we let him. You know it's his body. I uh, lean down. Kiss him on the forehead where he kissed me a long time ago. And push the sweaty hair out of his face. You are frustrating, but we will miss you. Essa gets up in a huff. Walks about 20 feet away. There's, there's, there's nothing else to do. Caleb. Uh, I, I tried. The Raise Dead revival ritual failing is one of the most depressing moments in anything critical role related in my opinion i when i first saw matt take out that dice and roll a natural one the 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 breath was taken not out of just the cast but also from me and i imagine everyone else watching live the moment where that dice hit one instead of reviving molly mock was so painful i think that was one of the handful of times the campaign actually pulled tears out of my face. It's happened a few times. It's happened a couple of times. But that one was like, all of this effort, the last entire arc, was them trying to get through Lucian into Molly Mock. And when they finally get the chance to bring back Molly Mock, it fails. The emotions of Essek, which aren't seen in this clip of him saying, 
you came so far and you still failed, it's not fair, is the most real part about all of this. They went so far. They did so much. They put so much effort in. They stopped the world from getting attacked. And what is their reward? Nothing. The friend is still gone and they now plan to bury him. Of course, this moment wouldn't end here, but the immediate reactions to everything that's going on with this situation is so painful, so raw, so real, so unfair. It's such a good moment. And it's something that wasn't controlled. It isn't an emotion that you can pick. It wasn't like they, you know, they have a idea in their head for how this is going to play out and, you know, they're going to make themselves cry for the moment. No, no, no. This is a real moment because it is decided by the dice. It is the most D&D moment in the list. They didn't make a choice to leave with the Raven Queen and, you know, gain power through that way and now they have to pay up. This was something they finally earned. They earned their chance to bring back their friend and it didn't work. That is powerful. That is raw. That is bullshit. So many different things and ways you can describe this. And after all of their hard work, it effectively failed. It is so powerful. So painful. I remember watching this live and I was in total shock. Total awe of the moment that this could happen. A failure is possible here. And I think that's one of the best reasons to add these ritual revival rules into your game. Because now it's no longer a guarantee you get to have that character back. You have to not only move forward from Molly Mock dying once, but you have to be the ones to kill him next time. And then move forward again. And in this moment, this brief moment before some good happens, that's the feeling they all have. And it's real, raw, and powerful. And there you go. My saddest moments or my favorite saddest moments. Weird way to put it. From Critical Role, all of the campaigns. And yeah. Um, let me know what you guys think down below. I'm sure I missed a bunch of moments that a lot of people have in their minds of what their their like saddest moment is. I don't I keep wanting to say favorite saddest moment. That doesn't make any sense. But saddest moments of anything. Let me know what you guys think down below. What is your saddest moment from any of the campaigns? You even give me your EXU ones if you have like a Calamity one. There was a couple of Calamity clips that I was like, mm, I should put this one in. But there were so many of them that I could make a list about it. So I'm going to do that eventually. But I know there's going to be a lot of people who are like, this moment in Campaign 1 or this moment in Campaign 1. I'm not as emotionally attached to Campaign 1 as I am Campaigns 2 and 3. So that's why there's not so many moments on this list from Campaign 1. I could have done Top 15, Top 10... But I feel like narrowing it down to like the ones that like truly bring out the, like the truest emotions in me was like the best way to make this list. So that's what I did. And the last one there with the revival failing was one of the it was the only one on this part of the like the list that made me cry. It, it made me tear up. The only other part that made me like cry from any of the other campaigns was the end of campaign two because that was you know, a journey that I watched from beginning to end and eventually caught up and was able to watch it live. And I didn't want to include campaign one ending and I didn't want to include campaign two ending because those are obvious moments. So I wanted to actually include real moments in the list. So that's what I did. But anyway, I will see you guys on Friday for the recap of episode 83. It's been a while and I'm so excited. It's been a while. It's, and I'm so excited to uh, be able to recap a campaign episode again so i'll see you guys then peace yeah yes we give him a better before it goes in I when it, very quiet left now is the time in the corner cast divine intervention i'm just sort of curious oh okay oh, please tell me what this means because no tired. did you succeed did you just succeed again wow the wild mother really loves him <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's what you get for trusting a weasel. <laughs> had a pretty baller <laughs> episode just for the war. Does he roll the fucking 2%? I did. You did 2%. You really did? I did. Holy fuck! Oh my god, Wild Mother, please hold be on, with us right on, now. Hold on, hold on. Um, and what are you? <clears throat> Whatever it was, just put it back. I think they've earned it. Put it back. <clears throat> you 
<laughs> I fucking love this game. So. Did you mother? Did you fucking roll a zero two? That's what happened. Holy shit! Of all the fungus and moss that has grown through the decomposition, <laughs> more plants begin to grow as well. Okay, oh, too, with the emotional whiplash. I need my bucket. <laughs> I'm exhausted. Wait, oh. wait. <laughs> Sorry. Vines and flowers and roots and ferns begin to bloom and blossom out of the ground surrounding his body. Begin to encase it in a way that's oddly familiar to one of you. You feel in this place of cold stillness, of death and vacancy, a warm breeze that smells sweet with hints of ocean. The green turns to brown and pulls away. <gasps> Your eyes open for the first time. Oh. <laughs> 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 Bolts up and runs. <laughs> no! no, no, no! I and mean